This is the story of failure, and how despite failing over and over again, it is important to keep moving forward and learning in order to eventually get it done. This is not the time I got it done, but it is the story of how I created a powerful 100% 3D printed recurve bow. Two years ago I uploaded a video about the creation of my first 3D printed bow. The critiques rolled in and this is really weak rubbish was one of the comments. And to top it off, the money shot, the grand finale, actually failed. Well, it's time to own up to that and make this thing work and here is how I plan to do it. Step number one, create a stronger bow that lasts, though it doesn't need to be 100% 3D printed. Step number two, convert that into a bow that is 100% 3D printed. After that is done, create a printed arrow and create a print bowstring. And once all of that is done, integrate it all. Easy peasy. To get things started, I removed all of the 3D printed screws because they were, frankly, trash. They broke all the time and didn't do much and just like Elsa, I had to let it go. Next, I focused on connecting the upper and lower limbs better. A viewer suggested using a Z-splice, but even with the glue, I just couldn't get it to work properly. So I kept iterating on the initial solution of having a connector and after some testing I learned I only needed to adjust two things to make this work. Thicken the backside of said connector because, well, it's the part that kept breaking during testing and I just tried that and it seemed to solve the issue good enough. And also change the printing direction from horizontal layer lines to tilted ones so the layers create fewer passive breaking points. To improve the connection to the bow's central grip, I replaced the 3D printed screw with threaded inserts and an M3 screw. And to make the bow itself stronger, I made the lower limb thicker and wider, similar to the design of a Danish home guard flat bow. This puppy now has about 22 pounds of draw weight and the new connector handles it nicely. Now to make this thing recurve, all I had to do was, well, curve the limbs here. I did some manual testing to figure out which way to bend it and eventually got it just right. Because, as always, doing the science and proper engineering is what smart people do, but not me. With this thing now rocking 22 pounds of draw weight, plus the benefits of recurve, it was more than good enough for target practice. But my crappy DIY bowstring V1 couldn't handle the load, which made me switch to Dyneema and splicing. To splice a string, you need a string and a splicing needle to punch a hole through the string. Then you bend the end of the string through that hole to create a loop and after that you create a second hole and repeat the process. Usually you tuck the end into the string itself, but I'm lazy and just gonna skip that part. This creates a lasting loop and also makes it pretty easy to get the measurements of the bowstring itself just right. Now after all of this it was time to test how lasting this bow is and man was I happy with the result. 50 shots and more, no breaking, no deterioration of strength and actually a fairly well performing bow. That was good enough and if you'd subscribe right now you might someday see the not just good enough version of this bow so please subscribe. On to the printed arrow. I have to admit the first arrow also was crap. The accuracy was bad and its durability was, well, let's just say it lasted about as long as in US resolution. And for some reason, again, I used 3D printed threading to attach stuff. I have to stop doing that. So the first thing I did was ditch the threading and switch to a sticking and welding system that I will explain in a bit. The real problem though was the accuracy and to fix this I had to introduce fletching. <laughs> Closer to the target. That part was tricky and pretty much all designs I tried failed. And at this point I introduced a new tool, a 3D pen. Technically anyone who wants to recreate this bow, which you will be able to, but more on that later, could use the printer's hot end to do this, so I find justifiable and still consider this a 100% 3D printed arrow. Anyway, all I did was print one layer veins and then weld them to the arrow using the 3D pen. This gave me an actually pretty accurate front hairy arrow. And in order to weld the three components of the arrow together, I just squeezed some filament through a tiny hole, effectively fusing them. Let's try it out! It still breaks after hitting the target, but it's actually capable of hitting the target and sinks the massive arrowhead pretty deep into the target itself and I will just take that W. 
And by the way, some duct tape would easily fix this, but this is the 100% 3D printed bow and arrow, not the 99.9% .9 one. With two out of three down, it was time to tackle the string. My first version of the string was a 3D printed wire created by using the process from my well, 3D printed rope video. The thing is that while it has an impressive tensile strength, it is a nightmare to produce it, and the thought of doing it again just made me cry internally and a little bit externally, so I took a different approach. A while back, while fiddling with another idea, I created a two layer thick 3D printed ribbon that also had some pretty crazy tensile strength. So my new approach was to 3D print a long ribbon that I would 3D weld to an adapter and that adapter I would hook onto the end of the bow. With that idea in my head, I hopped onto Max, designed the first version of the ribbon that printed fairly well and the end caps. I welded the ribbon to the caps, put it on the bow and while it worked very well initially, it did not take long for me to realize that a bow produces some pretty crazy forces. Naturally, that ribbon snapped all the time. But after a while, I found the right measurements and I had a functioning 3D printed bow ribbon. It doesn't last forever, but it was good enough for a few shots and that's all I needed. And with three out of three down, it was time to use all three components together. That should work, right? Right? Of course it didn't. But the super slow-mo video finally showed me what went wrong and I gotta tell you, I was fairly close to giving up. But what I saw in this video was that my rim slipped out of the arrow, which resulted in catastrophic failure. And after a quick redesign of the arrow's end, it was time to finish all of this up. Shooting a 3D printed arrow from a 3D printed bow with a 3D printed bowstring. Let's finish this. Thousands of times the charm, right? F I'm happy I'm done with this. <laughs> Now, those of you that spend close attention will wonder what happened to the M3 screws. Well, they are not there anymore. As it turns out, the bow doesn't really need them to work, so this year is really just 100% PLA and held together by the tension of the bowstring. As for the destructive power, a can of dog food, no problem, a watermelon covered in sheep's leather, no problem as well, and a ceramic blade, be gone. Um, so, well, <laughs> I think it works just fine. If you want to get access to the files and recreate this bow yourself, head over to Patreon and support my channel. First of all, this will help me in doing more of these projects. And second of all, those that subscribe to my channel there will get access to the STL files for this bow and any other project that I will publish in the future. It is only for personal use and there's a bit of a license agreement attached. Sorry, but legal stuff. And by recreating this bow, you will agree to this license agreement just so you know. Anyway, that's all for today. Tschüss.